good morning. I'm going to begin with a bit of information about services throughout this week. For those of you who are longtime Methodists, you know that today's the first Sunday of the month and traditionally we share in the Lord's Supper and Holy Communion on this day. Well, according to United Methodist doctrine and liturgy, we believe that the real presence of Christ is available by means of loaf and cup within the gathered community when we are face to face with one another. And naturally, the circumstances that we're under have raised the question of virtual communion services and various perspectives, each seeking to be faithful or coming to varied conclusions. The discussion around online communion is not a new one, and it calls for rich, personal, and collective theological reflection amid the circumstances. Now, thankfully, for just such a time as this, we do have at our disposal another ritual, which is not a sacrament, it's not Holy Communion, but it is a meal that celebrates fellowship and unity. The meal is called the Love Feast, and it goes back to before the Methodists, but through John Wesley, we inherited it, and it's especially suited for times and places when communion is not an option. This coming Thursday, Maundy Thursday, we will share in such a celebration together, reaching across the miles and across the airwaves in a virtual love feast, and I hope you'll join us. Now we've sent to those on our mailing list some brief worship materials to follow along in this morning's worship service, and if you'd like to also make use of them, they're posted on the church's website. The right-hand column has recent posts. Just find the one entitled Sunday Worship Bulletins, and there'll be worship materials there. Gary Farquhar is also uh, posting some wonderful music for our spirits this morning as together we'll com we're coming before you to worship the Lord our God. Additionally, we'll be making available materials for worship experiences on Monday, Thursday and Good Friday, this Thursday and Friday. Gary and I will be posting our materials at noon on each of those days. This morning our pattern will be a call to worship, scripture passage, shared prayer, scripture, message, closing prayer and benediction. If you happen to have a candle available, I invite you to light it now that together we might acknowledge the fact, the gift, that the light of Christ is in our midst. Will you join with me in a call to worship? Humble and riding on a donkey, we greet you. Acclaimed by crowds and caroled by children, we cheer you. Moving from the peace of the countryside to the corridors of power, we salute you, Christ our Lord. You are giving majesty a new face. You are giving those who long for redemption a new song to sing. We shout, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our first scripture reading is Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, and 19 through 29. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, God's steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good, for God's steadfast love endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. O oh God, we are like the people of Jerusalem so long ago. We are hungry for a hero. We crave some glimpse of greatness we are starving for the spectacular. We ga are gathered like those who watched the Passion Parade in Jerusalem, craning our necks to catch a glimpse of a Messiah. As we wait here for the Savior to come, we are reminded that we are certain to be surprised 
with how you choose to save us. Give us the courage to follow where the one on the donkey might lead us. Amen. Our second scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, the first 11 verses. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and it will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside the street, as they were tying it, as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks in the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is strange this year, isn't it? We Christians are accustomed to gathering for familiar songs, you know, Hosanna, loud Hosanna, taking our palms home, maybe forming them into crosses. Palm Sunday is the day that usually has a fair amount of tradition and noise and activity, and here we are in the relative quiet of our individual homes. We are accustomed to the collective energy that is generated on this singular day. It's an energy that is admittedly a bit deceptive as it opens the way to all that the rest of this week holds. We are accustomed to envisioning the parade that took place in Jerusalem, a parade of branches and garments on the ground, crowds of pilgrims together, and that, that strange man sitting on that donkey making his way. Instead, today's parades are taking very different form. As stories of you know, drive-by birthday parties through communities are taking place, teens and kids and seniors alike are getting regaled with cheers as an, at an appropriate distance, of course, complete with honking horns and balloons and handmade signs and a suitable amount of joyful energy. And perhaps an even more fitting parallel are the clapping parties that folks are giving to healthcare workers in their midst. Neighborhoods are heading to their front porches and joining in a time of vigorous clapping for those who are working so hard in the medical field. Today's masses are cheering for those who we pray will be our salvation. Palm Sunday is strange this year. Easter will be stranger. Now on its own, Palm Sunday carries an inevitable irony. It's a day of praise for one who turns out to be anything but what the people expected. They longed for a God who would come in might, you know, saving the day in real swashbuckling, swashbuckling style. Instead, they and we get this God whose power is of an entirely different sort. It's an ironic day. And the irony is jam-packed into that word that we focus on on Palm Sunday, Hosanna. The week begins with shouts, Hosanna, and it sounds like a happy cheer, a joyful word. You know, Palm Sunday is a parade after all. Maybe we can shout around the house, you know, or open up our windows and shout it or drive around our neighborhoods yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, you know. But then there's this irony. Hosanna doesn't mean hooray. It actually means save us. It means help. Hosanna, save us, the Israelites shouted. Save us from Roman rule. Save us from oppression. Save us from the weight of the world upon their shoulders. Hosanna is a word to be played in minor key. Hosanna, save us. And Hosanna is our shout today, too, as we seek to be saved 
from the weight of our world. Hosanna, Lord, save us from this virus, this unseen enemy. Save us from our fear and the ways in which the fear is stripping away our calm. Save us from our debilitating worry about our own safety and the safety of those we love. Don't we all just want to shout these days as this time in isolation draws weary and the simplest things have become so complicated. Don't you just want to shout, Lord, save us. In fact, join me if you will. Let's shout together, Hosanna, Lord, save us. You ready? Hosanna, Lord, save us. And so the people shouted Hosanna on the streets of Jerusalem that day. And while that word Hosanna is relegated to this day in our you know, collective thinking, for me, Hosanna, kind of that save us, also undergirds the rest of the week. On Thursday... The disciples gathered to celebrate the Passover meal, and Jesus greeted them at the entrance of the door. And he greeted them in a style that no one expected. Jesus greets them on his knees, washing their feet as they arrive, taking on the role of a servant, the one lowest in their midst, kneeling before them, startling them, upsetting them, and confronting their upset, uh, assumptions about what power looks like. And Peter spoke for us all when he wanted to push Jesus away as Jesus was challenging their ideas about what true greatness is. Peter was humbled that night. As the people shouted Hosanna on the streets of Jerusalem, Perhaps in the doorway on Thursday, they whispered, Hosanna. Lord, save us from our arrogance. Save us from our misguided ideas about greatness and importance. Save us from deciding how you, our Messiah, should display power. When might we whisper, Hosanna, save us. Lord, save us from thinking, that we don't need you in these times. Save us from thinking that we can manage on our own if we just muscle through. And as we look into the distance, into the months ahead, I'm wondering sort of in advance what saving we will need in our future. And by that I mean we're in this season in which human touch is now a source of danger and any contact is suspect. Well, I'm wondering what is being broken in us in this time of necessary isolation? What will be the lasting cost of fearing one another's touch? The day will come when we'll be face to face again. We'll be able to pass the peace and hold hands and hug and enjoy the, the gift of human contact. Save us, Lord. Save us from the unseen wounds that this season may cause. In the doorway, Hosanna was whispered. And then in that same gathering, Jesus fed his loved ones with traditional foods, but newly infused with love. And there, the Hosanna turns into a prayer as Jesus takes the ordinary stuff of our lives and feeds us with a commandment to love. A new commandment I give you, he says, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And at the table, the Hosanna takes the form of a prayer. Save us, we pray. Save us with the power of love. Save us today from our temptation to feast on Fear and worry. Save us from our ignorance about the power of hope. Save us by nourishing us in unexpected places through the simplicity of a meal or the sound of a loved one's voice. Save us, Lord God, as we seek to live into your commandment to love. Save us through that hope that is found in loving through generosity and patience and distance. At the table, Hosanna became not a shout, not a whisper, but a prayer. Lord, 
Save us, we pray. Save us with love. And sadly, we know that the week continued. As choices were made, and cruelty took place. And violence had its way. And with that, Hosanna, Lord, save us, became a cry. With remorse, we recall all that we did. And so we cry, Hosanna, Lord, save us as we are once again made aware of the lengths to which we went to reject you, the lengths to which we still go to reject you. In these days, Lord, save us from the forms that such rejection takes. Save us from our inclination to take our fear and turn it into anger. Save us from the tendency to take our powerlessness and twist it into blame. Save us from the temptation to sell you out for more convenient, less mysterious God. Save us from ourselves, Lord God. Hosanna, save us. At the foot of the cross, Hosanna became a cry. Lord, save us. Hosanna, a shout that God heeds, a, oh, a whisper that God hears, a prayer that God receives and a cry that God answers in the only way left. Hosanna, let us pray. Merciful God, save us. Hear our fervent prayer for all who suffer the effects of the virus, its infection of sickness or fear or anxiety. May those who are infected receive proper treatment and the comfort of your healing presence. May their caregivers, families, and neighbors be shielded from the onslaught of the virus and give solace to those who grieve the loss of loved ones. Calm the anxiety of those who fear its arrival and protect those who are most vulnerable, the marginalized, the underinsured, the uninsured, the immunocompromised, the elderly. Guide those who strive to develop tests, vaccines, and cure, that their work may limit and conquer the virus and restore communities to wholeness and health. Come quickly to places of grief and despair. Come quickly to places of hopelessness and fear. Healer of all, come quickly to the aid of your people. Come to bring comfort to the weary and the isolated. Come to shine your light in the darkness. Come, we pray, and bring relief. Be with those whose lives and whose livelihoods hang in the balance. Free us to be the compassionate and caring people you have called us to be. We pray for all who shout, Hosanna, Lord, save us. For all who whisper it, for all who offer it as a prayer, and for all for whom it will only come out as a cry. And it is that shout that whisper, that prayer, that cry that is in our hearts as together we now offer the familiar words you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, may we travel the road ahead with courage, with love, and with the uneasy peace that is the gift of faith in this holiest of weeks. Amen.